what George created with Star Wars was utterly unique. It's not a science fiction film, it's not science fantasy, it's not this, it's not that, it's Star Wars. Give us a bit more then, Pete. Magama! Okay, yeah. Magama! In Star Wars, creatures definitely feel like a theme of, of this series. This amazing puppetry and animatronics is awesome. <laughs> There's a believability in Star Wars. So when we're approaching a design, we reference animals and familiar things that help that alien to look like you've sort of maybe seen him before somewhere. The head shake is amazing. Yeah. Give a bit more shake, Liam, on the head shake. Drop out of you. Right there. That is so good. Jim Henson, the man who I owe so much to in the fact that he gave me my start in the film industry and always said to him performance was everything. And so to me, when we've created a character, whether it be a droid or whether or not it's a puppet or whether or not it's a, a character that takes 10, 15 puppeteers to bring to life, that is the point in which they bring their skills and their artistry to it. Oh, I'm lovely. <laughs> You guys. <laughs> they are all actors in their own way, and they all have their own personalities. Okay, do my teeth. This is good stuff. Look. Oh, no, hey, you know that's not tasty at all. Here it comes. Uh, yes. Together we work as a team and try and make it look as realistic as we can. When you've got the head on, of course, you can feel a little bit isolated. It's really great because I've got Mike in my ear, sort of essentially guiding me, that's making sure what, I'm safe. So it's really quite nice to have him there. We can, you know, he keeps me company. Looking amazing, guys. Who's inside today? Uh, Tom. 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 Hello, Tom. Tommy's here. Hold on, Tom. Thanks, Tommy. I do pity the guy inside, though, Tom. He's, uh, he's putting up with a lot of discomfort, a lot of heat and a lot of weight. And walk back it's quite a heavy thing, so uh, it takes a bit of muscle and it's quite uncomfortable. But um, it's all for the for the love of the movie. He walks back. Yeah, he walks back. The yes. end of the thing. He's got a little camera right. here. Adam, we'll just <laughs> <have a laughs> monitor. Yeah. That's how you guys do. Yeah, he's got your pull. Thank you. Well done, Liam. <laughs> Thanks. I'll give you a race. Still quite sweet. Eat your potato. The great thing about all these characters they have such a different type of personality. Hey. Oh, yeah. We talk about well, what kind of character these aliens are, if they're a villain or good or you don't trust him or if he's a pirate alien. We are a manufacturing process, ultimately. Everything we make has to go through a series of processes in order to be realized as a Star Wars character. They're all pretty much a bit of a collaboration. Each one gets weirder and more wonderful creatures. Yeah. <laughs> this is Claude. It's a nice process to see from beginning to end. You get your performer in it and they bring it all to life. Neil loves a good show and tell, doesn't he, Fiona? He does. <laughs> it's very exciting, very enthusiastic. Let's go, Paul. One screen. <laughs> I love the creatures. I actually treat them like they're creatures, like for real. Look straight, yeah, that's it. What I love about Star Wars is that you're dealing with a healthy use of practical effects, which is brilliant. And so this is a good opportunity for us as actors to react off the real stuff. Practical effects is what Star Wars was all about originally. You know, things like the Rancor and Tauntaun and stop motion. This time around, we're trying to do as much as we can practically. Maz, for instance, is a character that we all know from Force Awakens. Maz, up to this point, was computer generated. And with the animatronic version, we had one person in a motion capture suit doing the upper body. When I pop into her, she picks up all of my breath. If I move my head slightly, it really follows. Maz is really good at this. And we had a person lip sync live and perform the mouth, which is a bit like puppeteering a sock puppet, but actually doing it through two mechanical gloves. Ooh. It really is incredible. You want to take a photo? I would love to. If I it's extra it. money for a photo. <laughs> <laughs> I love the stand up Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Just put a brick wall behind her. You know, I'm here all week, try the beer. It's very really good. This is for you. As many expressions we got in here, sometimes they need that specific expression that maybe our mechanics lack. Then CG comes in, which I'm totally fine with because, especially on this film, it's been an amazing collaboration. <laughs>
where we help each other out. We rely so heavily on all the brilliant people at ILM. I can say to Roger Guyatt, who's the visual effects supervisor, there's the puppeteer on here with a rod, do you mind getting rid of him later? And it's like, no, no, we'll get rid of that. So that relationship is one that is very, very close, obviously creatively and economically, that has ramifications. There are other native people we could have on ordinary naked horses, and Roger could help us out yes, later sir. on. Okay, uh, it's 135. <laughs> I... <laughs> We've got orbacks, which are these horse-like creatures. And in creating what these orbacks are, we actually used real live horses. We took our horse team that worked with creature effects to be able to dress them, give them extra hair and costumes. So the boot velcro's on, and then the suit velcro's on top of that. We all had to think about horse temperature, got to make sure they don't overheat. So this suit is specifically for Ben's. He is the hero horse for Naomi. He's the most decorated because she's the leader. We tried to make the mask originally, but we couldn't do the mask because the sort of practicality of the horse running and how much you could see. It was too difficult, it was too limitating. We couldn't, couldn't do it practically. Should we do some designs for getting the actual geometry of the horse head? I'd yep. say, what would the thing look like, yep. what ideally? The Our team here had to study what kind of uh, characteristics they had in the hair and also you know, add all the detail that we would see on a real-life animal like twigs, mud and uh, blades of grass so that they feel like living, breathing animals. The best thing, I think the ears. The animators and VFX hoops were obsessed over the animation of the ears. I think it came out quite successfully. Um, it looks like twitchy ears. I guess the best thing about the Orbex is the sound because we have no idea what sound it makes. Something like, uh, no. <laughs> Orbex are noisy eaters. What sound they make? Um, I think. <laughs> Star Wars invites you into a galactic world that you can be part of. I don't know of any other film genre that does that as successfully as Star Wars.